Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the horizontal analysis of an income statement. And we're going to do this using Excel. We're also going to show the formula of how you do the horizontal analysis, if you're going to do it manually or you're going to do it on a piece of paper. So it should make sense either way, regardless of how you're asked to do the horizontal analysis. In our previous lesson, we looked at the vertical analysis of an income statement. We explained what it is and we showed you how to do it using Excel and we also interpreted the results. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to do the horizontal analysis and interpret the results and see why you do the horizontal analysis. But what is our horizontal analysis? Well, here is where you take the financial statements of a specific company. And in this case, we are looking at the income statement of Mesmat Group, which is a company listed on the stock exchange. And we use this exact same example to do the vertical analysis. This is where you take the information and you're comparing it over specific periods of time. And as you can see here, we're given 2018 and 2019 income statement for the company. And if you are asked to do the horizontal analysis and you're given two years as we are here, you will see how we are going to go about doing that. But sometimes you may be given more than two periods. You might be given three periods, four periods, or even five periods, and you might be asked to do the horizontal analysis. So how do you go about doing that? Well, firstly, let me show you the formula of how you do the horizontal analysis of an income statement. And here it is. You take the comparison year minus the base year and you divide that by the base year now what does this mean what does this mean well the base year is the year that you're using as a benchmark and it's usually the oldest year that you have in question and in this case our oldest year here is between 2018 and 2019 that means our base year is 2018 because it's the older one i hope it's making sense if you're comparing it over a period of five years then your oldest one let's say it's from 2015 you're given for 2015 2016 2017 2018 2019 that means that your base year is going to be 2015 and what do we mean by comparison year well this is what you're comparing the base year with so in this case our base year is 2018 that means our comparison year is 2019 and then you divide that by the base year which is 2018 now you'll do this for every line item in the income statement like for the sales for instance your comparison year since it's 2019 you're going to take 93660 minus 9941.6 which is the sales and then you divide that by the 9941.6 obviously these are in millions okay and then you will have your percentage for the sales and you'll do the same thing for cost of sales gross profit all the way until the profit or loss for the year but when you're using Excel, it's quite easy on how you go about doing this. So let me quickly show you how we do that. The first thing that I like to do here, and this is what simplifies my work, and it also shows how I went about doing that. The first thing that I like to do is the current year minus the base year. Okay, the comparison year minus the base year. In this case, 2019 minus 2018. So I'm going to put here what is called value change, meaning the change in the rent amount or the dollar amount. Uh, depending on the currency you're using so value change and now i'm looking at how it has changed from 2018 to 2019 and i'm going to take 2019 which is our current year or comparison year minus our base year which is 2018 and then it gives me the results there if it's positive that means there's increased from the previous year and if it's negative that means it has decreased from the previous year or from 2018 and then once i've done that all i need to do is just to drag all the way down to profit or loss for the year how did i do that well i went to the bottom right of the cell and then where it's showing a plus there that's where i click and then i drag it all the way down if you're having trouble doing that let me show you another way of doing that you just select the cell where you've just done your calculation and then you select all the other cells until profit for the year and then you press control and then you press d if you're using a macbook you press command or cmd and then you press d and there it has applied it to all the other cells okay now what it has done it has taken the value in 2019 minus the value in 2018 and it has given you your answer over there okay now that we have the answer all we need to do is now to put the percentage change so i'm going to write here percentage change now what are we seeing here we are seeing the change in the percentage from the previous year to the current year now that we have our value change so let me make that bold now that we have our value change all we need to do is to get the percentage change. how do you do that you take your value change and you divide that by your base year or your older year which is 2018 and then that will give you your percentage change and then i press enter and then all i need to do is to drag again all the way down here 
and then what I now need to do is to select the percentage sign as you can see on top here if I select the percentage sign and then I increase the decimals okay by pressing the arrow facing the left and then I do that I increase it to two decimal places and there we go I've just completed the percentage change and that's what I needed to do now what I have already done is the horizontal analysis of the income statement now what does it mean it means that from 2018 to 2019 for every line item it has changed by these respective percentages now let's look at one we're looking at the sales here the sales has changed by 2.99 percent meaning it has increased by 2.99 percent as you can see it's positive okay so this is how you do the horizontal analysis of an income statement using excel first you get the value change by taking your current year minus your previous year or if you're dealing with more than two years and you have to compare it to your base year or your oldest year, you use this formula down here that I've mentioned. Or you take your current year or the comparison year minus your oldest year. But in this case, we're using two years. So you're taking your current, which is 2019, minus your previous year, which is 2018. You get your value change and then you take the value change divided by the older year, which is 2018, and it will give you a percentage change. And you've just done your horizontal analysis. Now, why do we do the horizontal analysis? Do we just do it and leave it at that? No, we use it to make decisions. We use it to see how our results have changed over the years or over the two years. And we're using it to see the trend uh, in our performance over the years. Now, why do we use it? We use it so that we can interpret the results and make decisions using those interpretations. Now, here's how you analyze it. If you're asked to comment on the horizontal analysis of an income statement, as you can see here, your sales barely changed from the previous year. It only changed by 2.99%. But what I like doing is to look at the big changes or the major changes in our income statement over the two years. And that is where I like starting when I'm commenting on the horizontal analysis. Here, the first thing that I can see is our depreciation. Our depreciation has significantly increased by 170%. Okay, that is a very significant increase. So that's why I can make comments. I can see here also the impairment of assets has significantly increased by 972%. That's why I can make comments. So let's talk about depreciation here. Our depreciation has significantly increased from 2018 to 2019. What does that mean? It means that, and this is not just depreciation, as you can see, it's depreciation and amortization. It means that we may have increased the number of assets we have in the company. And this is where you'd also have to go and see your statement of financial position and see if that's actually the case. You may have actually increased the number of assets you have in the company. Hence, your depreciation has increased from the previous year. So you have changed your depreciation policy on how you compute depreciation for some reason one reason or another that is what could have constituted the change in the depreciation another one that we are seeing here is our impairment of assets as you can see from 2018 to 2019 that means we have a significant impairment of assets in 2019 compared to 2018 what are the possible reasons why so you always speak to the possible reasons why something has happened it may be that our assets are not producing the results that we hoped it would have produced or they may have been obsolete or the change in technology have made our assets value drop significantly those are some possible reasons why that could have happened another one i'm seeing here is the foreign exchange loss like you can see here it's 5196 percent that is a significant change from 2018 why is that obviously the foreign exchange it means that our local currency could have greatly fallen from the previous year or the foreign currencies it could be one or it could be more than one as we can see this is a group here trading in multiple countries those countries or those currencies could have significantly improved, meaning that ours could have fallen relative to those foreign currencies. So you are looking at each item here and you are saying, okay, this one here, we can see there's a huge increase from the previous year. And these are the possible reasons why. As you can see here as well, finance costs has increased by 186%. What does that mean? It means we probably took on more debt as a company. By taking on more debt, meaning we are incurring more finance costs that's why we are paying more to service our finance cost and by doing so by paying more it means that more money will be catered towards that and it means that we have more debt as a company so those are possible reasons that we are speaking to as we are looking at our horizontal analysis and you can see why it's important 
that horizontal analysis is done or why it's actually done to be able to see the trend over the years using the percentages now let's look at what has dropped you can see here insurance proceeds on items of ppe has dropped as you can see it's a negative reorganization and restructuring has dropped so i'm looking at all the negative here occupancy costs has dropped so that's where you can speak to those ones today and say what are the possible reasons as to why they have dropped Another thing that you can see here, which is the big one, is our loss of profit for the year. We have seen that our profit has dropped by 249%. And as you can see, the actual value here, it's a negative. It was positive in 2018, but now it's negative in 2019. That means that it has significantly dropped from the previous year. And you can speak into that. You can speak to that by saying it has dropped because why? What are the contributing factors as to why our profit for the year has dropped well we have just mentioned a few of them one of them is our finance cost which has increased meaning we have more expenses and that is why it has dropped we also looked at our depreciation which has increased from the previous year and that is why it has dropped our profit for the year we're also looking at our impairment of assets which has increased from the previous year or from 2018 now what i want to say here is that you just need to be very careful here because not everywhere where you see a negative means that your profits have decreased no somewhere you see a positive means that an expense has actually increased and by an expense increasing it means that your profits have actually fallen an example of that here is the impairment of assets for instance as you can see it's positive what does that mean it has increased from 2018 to 2019 so by be by it being positive i hope you know that obviously it's not a good thing because your expense has increased but where you see a positive under income like here under sales we see a positive it means our sales has slightly increased by 2.99 percent so you just also bear that in mind when you're looking at your percentage change in the way we have done it here in our horizontal analysis of an income statement i hope it has made sense i hope you've gained value from this lesson and if you have please subscribe to our channel like this video and share it to those you think it might help till next time cheers